Survivance is resisting those marginalizing colonial narratives and policies so indigenous knowledge and life ways may come into the present with new life and new commitment to that survival. Careful with the stories we tell, naming survivance, sovereignty, and story by Lisa King, Rose Gubell, and Joyce Rain Anderson. In Stories That Wound, Stories That Heal, Daniel Heath Justice writes about one of the most dangerous and harmful colonial narratives, the myth of indigenous deficiency. Stories that claim indigenous peoples are always missing the qualities that would make them successful are stories of indigenous deficiency. Additionally, any success is chalked up to proof of assimilation. Assimilation projects are, and always have been, a form of violence, and seems to encourage colonizers to dismiss indigenous peoples as no longer authentic. Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz and Dina Julia Whitaker wrote, all the real Indians died off, and 20 other myths about Native Americans, which helps debunk many myths that stem from the violent lie that authentic indigenous peoples no longer exist. The horrible colonial narrative that the only way indigenous peoples can survive or exist is through assimilation leads to more assimilation projects and violence, like the Dakota Access Pipeline, for example. The U.S. government continues to disrespect the sovereignty of indigenous peoples and First Nations using the idea of assimilation. Colonial narratives, being inherently violent, encourage violence against indigenous and First Nations peoples. Indigenous literatures, indigenous stories, indigenous truths. These can be medicine to heal the wounds that colonial narratives inflict. However, while reading indigenous literature, I keep in mind that not all of the stories are meant for me. Although I have found many of the stories helpful, some of them communicate ideas that are not mine to grasp, and that is okay. Not all indigenous literature is meant to enlighten non-indigenous readers. In fact, much of indigenous literature is meant to affirm, uplift, encourage, inspire, and heal indigenous readers. I am not entitled to know other people's truths, and no one is entitled to know everything. Stories are valuable, powerful, and frequently intimate, meaning it would be wrong to pry them loose and chew them, as capitalist consumers are prone to do. I think of survivance as more than survival. To me, survivance plants seeds that will continue to struggle toward the sun until they bloom. Survivance is political. Survivance is action. Survivance is preserving our stories, our traditional ways of life, and our relationships. Pushing back against violent colonial narratives with empowering stories of truth is one way of practicing survivance. Daniel Heath Justice wrote, Why Indigenous Literatures Matter, which asked questions that helped me build a framework for how I think about Indigenous literature. The book explores the diverse ways indigenous writers affirm indigenous people's presence, present, and future. Justice explains in the preface of Wilm that his book is meant to start discussions and be political, with the goal of forging stronger relationships that are more honest and just. When I think of survivance, I think of the epigraph in the preface written by Leanne Howe of the Choctaw Nation. Our stories are unending connections to past, present, and future. The stories we tell ourselves and we tell each other are unquantifiably important because they inform the way we live, the way we speak, the way we care for each other, and the way we shape our futures. For hundreds of years, the people of what is currently called the United States have told stories meant to erase indigenous peoples and First Nations peoples from history, from the present, and from the future. Colonial narratives are violent, evil stories that kill people wherever they are spoken. Acts of survivance, stories of survival and resistance, promote indigenous people's sovereignty, continuance, and ways of life. Frank Walm is a Shichungu Lakota hip-hop artist. In an interview, Walm explains, my perspective is only one, 
But, my people, the plains people, a handful of those nations, we had a prophecy that came to our people many, many years ago. According to Walm, that prophecy said his people would suffer greatly, and the seventh generation would suffer the most, but also be the generation to help bring healing, change, and cultural and language revival.